Hi Sammy. Hey Aaron. Welcome back to China. Thanks. So I heard that you wrote a book. Would you like to tell us more about that and maybe give a short summary? Sure.、Uh, I wrote the book that I wrote is called Simply Plus, and this book is basically about my life. As you can see, I'm a plus size, and I was trying to、uh, talk about the challenges that a plus size person gets. So it starts from my childhood, how I was bullied from school, from being a big kid, and you know having. People at school laugh at me like, "Oh, you're too fat," calling me different names. And even when I grew up, I noticed that it didn't stop. It even、um, trying to get jobs. There were some jobs that I lost because of my weight. Some people saying, "Oh, we we don't want a fat person," or you have to look smaller, and stuff. So basically, it was a book that I wrote to try and encourage some people who are plus size, because、uh, some people when they get bullied, they get pushed to the extremes. To want to try other things, I'll tell you. I tried, you know. I tried to change the way I look. How? By maybe trying to take pills or trying to, you know, do different diets that were not healthy.、Uh, just so many things that people were saying that, oh, take this; it will make you lose weight. Take this. So I tried a lot of things, and I found myself also. Becoming sick because some of the things were not healthy. So this book is basically、um, a book just to encourage people that you know you are beautiful the way you are. You don't have to try to go to certain extremes just to、uh, lose weight. I mean, you're on social media every time. There is a certain type of you know people that you see. Some people are going to extremes of looking a certain way because. Of what society think beauty is about, so、uh, it's basically about that. But also, I didn't want it to just target plus size people. I wanted to target also maybe people who've just been bullied because of their appearance,、uh, because some people they think they are too dark or they think they are too light, and they still try to to do a lot of things. So simple plus is basically. Just to say, remain positive. You are simple plus. You are beautiful the way you are. Yeah, that is a very good motive to tell people because I see on social media there's a lot of norms nowadays that people push you to become the extreme,、right. and most of the times that's quite unhealthy. As you mentioned, people go on really unhealthy strict diets, and they many even get pushed to use steroids、yes. and PEDs at either a young age or just early on, which、mm-hmm. is not healthy at all. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true. So、um, I actually witnessed、uh, someone who tried to she she went for liposuction. Uh, just to cut her tummy, but I think there was a mistake somewhere. It didn't go well, and then she lost her life. So that was another motivation because this was a person that I knew personally. So for me, writing that book, it was also seeing that that you know someone lost her life just because of maybe what people were saying to her that she doesn't look good. So yeah, it was just more to create awareness about. Just not following social media because I tell you, some of it it's a lie. You know,、yeah. <laughs> I've noticed these days there are so many apps that can change you. You know, people like changing, and we try and imitate things that are not for real, and then we end up hurting ourselves. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. How long did it take for you to write this book? You know, if I tell you, you'll be shocked. If I tell you that I only wrote this book in less than a month. Wow! During that time, we were on lockdown, and、um, I just wanted because first I wrote like my whole life story, and it's a different mix. You know, my life is not only about being a plus size. So I had a lot of stories, even about my stay in China. And when I took it to an editor,、um, someone to look at it. 
the the person advised me like oh you've got too many stories and i think it would be difficult for people to really grasp what you want why don't you pull out you know different topics and make different books so i uh, i then decided what am i going to do so my son actually was like oh why don't you start with your story of being a plus size. So I just took that story of being a plus size because in that particular book, I'd only wrote it as a chapter. Oh, yeah. yeah. So to try and fill it up, to make it a book, yeah, it took me about two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. So every day you were working on it for Yeah, hours. because I, we're not going to work, you know, just yeah. wake up and just start writing. And, you know, uh, when you are in that zone, yeah. sometimes I wouldn't want to stop because I felt like if I stop, maybe I'll forget what I want to write. So I'll just write and just sit on my bed and yeah. write, yeah. Uh, but you're typing, right? Or writing? I was doing both. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'll write because you know what? There's certain things that will just come and you're just sitting and then you just quickly write because I, I don't want to miss that. You'll write it and then clearly uh, start typing. But to put the whole book together, I think, yeah, it was a, a month. Yeah, that's incredible. That's very fast. Are you planning on writing other books? I am actually. I've got a series of uh, children's books. Uh, and then there's another one for single parents called Writing Solo. Uh, the children's books are basically uh, books also based on my life, but trying to teach, um, I want to put them in schools to try and teach children about diversity, inclusion, you know, the DEI, equity and uh, belonging. So also using my story because you know being a teacher and working in a school i noticed that there are certain topics that we can't find books for yeah. so i wanted to use my life just to make a story to try and teach kids about either racism kid, teach kids about diversity you know even using the plus side like for kids to know how different we are and appreciating our bodies and also that sense of belonging uh like you just saw my office i'm still the only one right yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah so i put it in um children's stories for them to understand those dynamics how does it work if you find yourself being the only one and everyone is different yeah. right yeah so uh, i i got it's a set of 10 books uh, for the kids and then the other one is about single parenting uh, because i'm a single mom like uh you know there's so many things that people say about you know if you are raised by a single parent some people think oh the child won't turn out good or they're bad right so i also wanted to show that even though you are a single parent but you can raise kids who are awesome yes. yeah i can definitely relate to you while writing books now in my trip to china i'm journaling a lot every day nice. which is either that after the trip i decided to just keep it as my own memories or I'm planning to probably write a book about that. So it is true that I'm every day I'm struggling. Look, I have to remember this before I forget. Yeah. Right? So just keep a journal. That's that's good to to keep a journal because sometimes you know you you get this and then it disappears yeah. if you don't put it down. So it's nice to just scribble down later on. You can now put everything together. It doesn't have to be now, but later on you can now at least remember stuff yeah. yeah what would be your number one tip for anyone trying to write a book hmm to start, to start <laughs> yes yeah. because you know i would always wanted to write a book but i had so many excuses also in my head like i don't have time will i be able to do it you know when people are advertising books it's like this is a big deal you know yeah. and you start thinking will people read it will people like it so you think a lot and discourage yourself again yeah. so for me i would say if you want to write just start and write don't stop if you feel like you want to write it don't you know the, the lady that I gave my book to read as an editor for, for just for her to tell me what she thinks, she said to me, listen, there's no story because at first I was scared that maybe it's too 
short or you to be too and then she was like just stop where you stop that's your story yeah. it doesn't have to be five thousand pages if your story ends at 10 pages that's it just stop so just write don't think too much like oh it has to be maybe thousands of pages for people to like it no your story is your story so where it ends that's where it ends where you feel like okay five chapters is enough stop there mm -hmm. and also and, and i found it with me like i'm saying the, that simply plus there's only 10 chapters and I sent it to people and some people read it within two days they finished, which was something that for me was great because usually you buy a book and you don't finish it, you read it, it's like you end up just shelving yeah. it and not knowing. But if it's nice, short and sweet, it's like people read it and finish and like the one more. So now people are, when are we getting the, another one? So now I'm saying, oh, okay, if I had maybe put too many things maybe they could have gotten bored they couldn't finish it yeah. and stuff so yeah just write something whatever you write it can be your trip to china short as it is make it interesting and people want to know more yeah. yeah so just start that's what i can say thank you for your time thank you for having me